Bobcats out of the SEC taking on Conference USA champion East Carolina. The Pirates out of Greenville, North Carolina. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Todd Harris down in the field joining us in just a few moments. You saw the Pirates, they're the Conference USA champions, but to a man, they almost feel like they haven't gotten the respect that comes along with that title. On the other side of the field, Bob, Kentucky comes into this game walking that fine line between a winning and a losing season. What are these teams playing for? Well, Mark, as you said, these two teams finished the season differently, but I think they both have a lot to prove today. I mean, East Carolina finished on a positive. They won six of their last seven games, but today against an SEC team, they have a chance to prove that they can consistently beat the big boys and win one for Conference USA. Kentucky, they finished on a negative. They lost six of their last eight games. But today, they have a chance to prove, Mark, at six and six, that they legitimately belong in a bowl game. And it sounds funny, but win one for the SEC. Well, the Kentucky Wildcats, good news for them is that they've gotten a lot of players healthy during the break between the end of the regular season and up until now Kentucky came in hey they started off four and oh five and three overall and then went into that little bit of a tailspin Bob that you mentioned a few moments ago it's the Kentucky Wildcats out of the SEC taking on Conference USA champion East Carolina the Pirates out of Greenville North Carolina Hello everybody I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey Todd Harris down in the field joining us in just a few moments you saw the Pirates they're the Conference USA champions but to a man they almost feel like they haven't gotten the respect that comes along with that title on the other side of the field Bob Kentucky comes into this game walking that fine line between a winning and a losing season what are these teams playing for well Mark as you said these two teams finished the season differently but I think they both have a lot to prove today I mean East Carolina finished on a positive they won six of their last seven games but today against an SEC team they have a chance to prove that they can consistently beat the big boys and win one for Conference USA Kentucky they finished on a negative they lost six of their last eight games but today they have a chance to prove Mark at six and six that they legitimately belong in a bowl game and it sounds funny but win one for the SEC well the Kentucky Wildcats good news for them is that they've gotten a lot of players healthy during the break between the end of the regular season and up until now Kentucky came in hey they started off four and oh five and three overall and then went into that little bit of a tailspin Bob that you mentioned a few moments ago. East Carolina Bob got off to a great start 3 and 0 surprised a lot of people Kentucky 4 and 0 both teams hung their hats on defense. Well Mark these teams are almost identical after watching the tape I really believe if they played 10 times each team would win five games and the bottom line you said it the reason they're in a bowl game at all is because of the consistent play on their defense on offense both teams because of injuries and graduation I mean they have had to adapt and try to move the ball differently. I know you love it this way <laughs> this adds don't even up, try hey, me <laughs> adds up to a low scoring close game now uh, it is a former defensive coordinators dream Kentucky against East Carolina we'll see what the offenses can do when we come back kick in a minute and welcome back everyone to the 50th edition of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl Kentucky taking on East Carolina from Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium here in Memphis and we go downstairs now to Todd Harris Todd all right thanks he Jonesy here with coach Holtz Colts it's been over a month since you guys won the conference USA title what will be the key for you guys to getting a good start oh I mean we just got to go play it's a month is a long time to wait but you know what these guys have been extremely anxious and really proud of these players with everything that they've accomplished this year but hope we're not done yet we still got some goals on the table we want to get accomplished you're fortunate to have a Hall of Fame coach and Lou Holtz your father he was able to give the pregame speech what was his message I mean he did a great job having the opportunity to talk to the the team more or less about playing the game for 60 minutes and having a lifetime to remember it and what we have the opportunity to do to represent Conference USA. Thanks for your time. Thank y'all. All right. Thanks a lot Todd and uh, Lou Holtz as we all know Bob uh, one of the better motivational speakers inside that locker room and even outside the locker room when it comes to 
getting people ready for the task. Well, I promise you this. <laughs> Practice for East Carolina getting ready for this bowl game, having won six of their last seven, was probably a lot more fun than it was for Kentucky, who lost six of their last eight. But you know what? None of that matters right now. Kentucky winning the toss, deferring to the second half. The Pirates will receive the opening kickoff. Tim Maste will kick off to J.R. Rogers and Michael Bowman for the Pirates. And we are underway in the 50th AutoZone Liberty Bowl. This one going deep and through the back of the end zone. Bowman will watch it go over his head, and East Carolina will start off on its own 20 yard line as we take a look at the impact players for East Carolina Patrick Pickney the quarterback completing 63 percent of his passes on the season through 12 touchdowns against seven interceptions. Yeah Devon Drew because of injuries marked to the tight ends or to the wide receivers excuse me he has become the third down impact receiver and then CJ Wilson a defensive end conference USA player defensive player of the year for so, East Carolina. So you tell me we're going to see a slug out today again a punch him in the mouth type of defensive battle. Huh? These are two really good front sevens on these two defensive teams. They're going to run it on first down and Pickney has nowhere to go. Johnny Williams making the stop on the play the six foot three inch senior linebacker for the Wildcats as we take a look at the starting lineup scrolling across the top of your screen for East Carolina. Keep in mind for the Pirates you talk about some of the injuries that they've had during the course of the year they've had 44 different starters this season so they've had a little bit of time to heal and get some of their regular personnel back for coach Holtz and defensive hasn't been much better either. Pickney hands it off. That was Brandon Simmons. As we take a look at the Kentucky starters up front Jenkins one of the guys to keep an eye on Pryor, Peters and Jeremy Jarman. Jarman number 99 had some real heavy words to lay on the Kentucky fans uh, trying to inspire them to make the trip here to Memphis and watch the game Jarman number 99 making a homecoming to Memphis. He's from the area. Rich Brooks meanwhile in his seventh year as head coach for the Wildcats. This may not be the national championship game but this is a big game mark for both of these teams now. Pickney going to take off with it nowhere to go. Patrick Pitney sacked back at the six yard line by Corey Peters. We talked about both front sevens really good. Watch the attacking penetrating defense right here. Kentucky up the field. You know Kentucky not known for great defense Mark over the years. They may be one of the most improved teams in the country over the last three years in defense. And Dodge meanwhile punting from his own end zone gets off a high spiral driving McCaskill back to the 43. Nice move at the 45 but stop at the 48 yard line. A 49 yard punt and about five yards on the return from McCaskill. Shambliss making the stop. Mike Hartline got his team off to a five and three start as a starter before being benched after the Florida game. He's back now though for the Wildcats. And these next two impact players both defensive players you mentioned Jeremy Jarman the young guy from Memphis defensive end also Trevard Lindley only a junior may test the NFL waters looks like he may be one of the top 50 players right now in the country. First down and 10 good starting field position here for the Wildcats on their first possession backs lining up out of the eye. Tony Dixon is the deep back and Hartline fires high intended for E.J. Adams as we take a look at the Wildcat starters at the top of your screen there's Hartline talked about him completing 54 percent of his passes eight touchdown tosses versus seven interceptions this year and we talked about injuries to the East Carolina offense Kentucky with heavy heavy graduation losses and then also an injury to Randall Cobb who ended up being their starting quarterback late in the season. Line hands it off to Dixon. Dixon dancing between the tackles over midfield and brought down to the 48 yard line. He picked up two before being brought down by Nick Johnson, middle linebacker for the Pirates. Mark, I talked about both offenses having to adjust and adapt, really change their scheme. When's the last time we saw this much eye formation? <laughs> I mean we're back to like the 1982 Liberty Bowl right now I mean, because everybody the age of shotgun spread yeah, was both teams having yeah. to adapt now where's Bo Jackson speaking of eye formation the guy that really started this auto zone Liberty Bowl game uh, back in the day third down and eight coming up 
out of the shotgun Hartline given time finds his target but it's going to be short of the first down at the 45 yard line and they'll have to punt Connor was the receiver and there's Randall Cobb who became the starter Bob at quarterback with three games left in the regular season for Kentucky suffered a knee injury in the regular season closer against Tennessee. Yeah, what a remarkable athlete just a true freshman out of the Knoxville area started at wide receiver. He was the punt returner and the starting quarterback that takes a chunk of offense away from Kentucky. Bad news for Kentucky. He's still their leading receiver. Travis Simmons back for the punt calls for the fair catch at the 17 yard line. So after each team has one offensive possession both go three and out. We'll see if Pinckney can turn the beat around when we come back. Well this was the scene prior to the game a contentious moment between East Carolina and Kentucky and sometimes maybe you think that it's some of the pent up frustration that builds up in between that long wait Bob between bowl game <laughs> and end of the regular season. What's yeah. your take. I'll tell you the other thing you know you go to all those bowl festivities the two teams they've probably been together three or four nights when both teams are there and they have to be proper and on their best behavior. Right. They get so tired of seeing each other. <laughs> That's just kind of par for the course. Didn't look that way when they were competing in the talent contest a couple of nights ago. On first down, Pinckney hands it off to Simmons. And Simmons has stopped up after a short gain. For more on that situation, let's go down to Todd. Well, Jonesy, it was contentious indeed. It carried all the way from the 50-yard line into the title, and it even spilled into the stands. Now, the revered song they play before every Kentucky game, My Old Kentucky Home, very somber. Well, the fans from ECU did not respond. They were chanting purple and gold during that, so we may have a tussle in the stands here at the AutoZone Liberty Bowl as well. <laughs> oh, boy. Burgeoning rivalry? Who knows? Simmons, the tailback, game two. It's second down and eight coming up. Pickney going to pull the trigger here wide open in the flat complete for a first down Brandon Simmons making the catch on the play the six foot one inch senior gains 15 and Ashton Cobb makes the tackle for Kentucky yeah, Brandon Simmons you know that's his 25th catch on the season really a solid powerful guy as I mentioned the starting tailback Dominic Lindsay hurt in two a days and now you see East Carolina coming out and marking more of the spread phase of their offense third down and eight coming up we'll see what they call coming out of this timeout Pickney with plenty of time complete and still on his feet drew with a big play Devin drew it'll be first and goal Pirates a 42 yard gain we talked about Kentucky's defensive front. How about the pass protection by East Carolina? I mean, look at the window he has to throw the football through. And then Travard Lindsay missed the tackle. And then Shamari Moore and the ex quarterback who gained 40 pounds, <laughs> helping his NFL stock early in this game. First and goal. Pickney on the quarterback draw nowhere to go brought down at the 11 yard line he'll lose a couple of yards on the play nice stop made by Braxton Kelly the six foot two inch 230 pound senior that was a great play by the linebacker Braxton Kelly a four year starter Good bolts putting it on the shoulders of his quarterback uh, Patrick Pickney who Bounce back from adversity earlier this year. He was benched during that three game losing skid against University of Central Florida. Came back and led this team successfully down the stretch. Here they are, second and goal. Completes the pass to Simmons, and Simmons has bounced out at about the nine yard line. It sets up a third down and goal. Marcus McClinton and Jeremy Jarman making the stop for Kentucky. He picked up three. Well, Jeremy Jarman made that big statement about winning the football game. Watch him right here, I believe, 99, Mark. He's going to snip this screen out. They try to chop him. He stays up. Good lick also by number two right there for Kentucky. And Jarman, uh, during a basketball game at Kentucky, and it was announced that they were going here. Tenth play of the drive for the Pirates. Pickney complete. And a great stick at the five yard line by Marcus McClinton. 
The catch was made by Daryl Freeney, and it's fourth down coming up for the Pirates. Yeah, Marcus McClinton missed the Tennessee game with a cut in his leg. He has 36 starts for this Kentucky defense. That was two plays in a row right there by McClinton. Excellent tackle. And as a result, Ben Hartman coming in to attempt this field goal. He's 19 of 29 on the season. They're going to spot it down straight ahead, about 22 yards out. And he knocks it through. East Carolina on the scoreboard first here in the 50th edition of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl from Memphis. Conference USA against SEC. Joe Pa's hair hadn't changed much. Or the glasses. And the uniforms <laughs> of Penn State have not changed at all now. Those are the exact same uniforms they're wearing now. Of course, Joe Pa went from bifocals to trifocals since that time. Here's Smith on the kickoff return for Kentucky. Second down and 15 after the penalty against Kentucky. The toss and a fumble. Still loose. Still loose. And it's recovered by Hartline, the quarterback. Alfonso Smith lost it initially. And Mike Hartline, the Kentucky quarterback, recovered it way back at the 45. So they'll lose a bunch of yards now with about two minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah, they come down the line right here with the option. I mean, Hartline pitched that ball so early, he never took it to the defensive end. Pitched it behind the tailback a little bit. Keep in mind, this Tulsa defense, seven turnovers forced. Excuse me, this East Carolina defense, seven turnovers forced against Tulsa. And that conference championship game. Tony Dixon in a tailback. Hand it off on third and long. And Dixon brought down. About the 35 yard line, the market of the 34, Van Eskridge, Emmanuel Davis, and Chris Maddox on the stop. Lonis Sieber comes into the ball game. Looks like he's in, and uh, this might be still on the fringes of field goal range for the Kentucky place kicker. He's a three year starter, nine for 16 and 08. And you know, Kentucky's had three field goals blocked, Mark. And this is always a position because of the low trajectory on these long field goal attempts. So field goal protection right here, the first priority. This one's going to become from outside of 50 yards. About 51, almost 52. Got some leg behind it. And shot it off to the right a little bit. With 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. He gave it a good ride, though. Now 9 of 16 on the season. You're right. He hit that football very well. Just pushed it a little bit to the right. Well, and as a result, East Carolina will take over first and 10 from its own 34. And we get a look at, for the first time today, Norman Whitley at tailback for the Pirates. Number 33. A nice compliment to Brandon Simmons, who's more the power runner. They pass it complete out to the 40 yard line. It's Daryl Freeney. Well, we talked about the uh, rivalry, quote unquote, maybe between these two teams. What about uh, the champion intramural flag football teams from East Carolina and the University of Kentucky squared off in the 30th annual ACIS flag football national championships? And uh, Kentucky won that one. 15 nothing Bob and a well, 16 yard touchdown pass no carry I know you scouted that game <laughs> East Carolina already on the board with three today so <laughs> this is Norman Whitley who had the touchdown deciding run of about 66 yards 69 yards pardon me in the conference championship game David Jones making the stop Bob how does he compliment Brandon Simmons I like example? Norman Whitley I mean he's the prototypical scat back you know, small, short guy, not small, hard to find, good change up to the power back, Brandon Simmons. And talk about Norman Whitley. He's actually the team's leading rusher, even though he doesn't start. You can see East Carolina. I mean, they're out of that eye formation. They feel like they have to spread Kentucky out. And Whitley stopped up. His forward progress going to be marked at the 47 yard line, where he's stopped by Ventrell Jenkins. East Carolina taking on Kentucky with the lead as we move into the second quarter.
Carolina already on the board with three today. So <laughs> this is Norman Whitley who had the touchdown deciding run of about 66 yards 69 yards pardon me in the conference championship game David Jones making the stop Bob how does he compliment Brandon Simmons I like second? Norman Whitley I mean he's the prototypical scat back you know small short guy not small hard to find quick good change up to the power back Brandon Simmons that's uh, Ricky Lumpkin limping off the field for Kentucky and Nine seconds to go here in the first quarter and talk about Norman Whitley. He's actually the team's leading rusher even though he doesn't start. You can see East Carolina. I mean they're out of that eye formation. They feel like they have to spread Kentucky out. And Whitley stopped up his forward progress going to be marked at the 47 yard line where he's stopped by Ventro Jenkins. East Carolina taking on Kentucky with the lead as we move into the second quarter. Welcome back everyone to the 50th edition of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl from Liberty Bowl Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Todd Harris down to the field back for the start of the second quarter of play. East Carolina leading three to nothing. Second down and nine coming up. Working out of the shotgun. Pickney hands it off to J.R. Rogers. And Rogers with a nice burst has the first down and then some. Rogers down to the 28 yard line. On his first touch of the day. A 25 yard pickup, so the running back by committee approach working. Yeah, J.R. Rogers, only his 31st carry of the year, the little sprint out draw. And I mean, this replay just says it all. I mean, was it poor tackling or was it a great effort? I think it was a great effort right there by J.R. Rogers, Mark. Gives them a first down. And Running back committee by committee approach working because Chris Johnson last year's top tailback for the Pirates now in the NFL with the Tennessee Titans. Pickney going up top has a man incomplete at the two yard line intended for Drew. Drew got a little bit twisted up perhaps expecting it over the other shoulder. Well you're going to see Drew on the corner route had Ashton Cobb the safety turned around. I mean it's just man to man coverage. The ball thrown should have been thrown a little more over that outside shoulder because he had to spin back around. But again, Davin Drew, you can call him a tight end, Mark. He is a wide receiver, and they're having a hard time matching up to Davin Drew. Yeah, moves pretty well out there in space. Second down and ten. A handoff right up the middle to Simmons. Simmons still on his feet. Touchdown, Pirates. Talk about those multiple backs. Simmons lined up at fullback that time. And Myron Pryor, 98, missed the tackle in the hole. But you talk about taking advantage of your weapons and moving guys around. A 28-yard run for his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Brandon Simmons. And East Carolina now with a 9 to nothing lead. Conference USA team has never beaten an SEC team in this AutoZone Liberty Bowl throughout the years. This would be a first. The kick is good, and Simmons helps give the Pirates a 10 0 lead. Well, that's a little Lou Holtz flashback right there. <laughs> the trap option that they put in with the open time in preparation for the bowl. <laughs> Bob, why does this play work? Mark, it's a pretty good scheme. They're going to run the trap option with the guard pulling in the trap. And look, there's no quarterback under the center. They're doing it out of the shotgun, what a lot of people call the pistol offense. So it's out of the shotgun. Simmons lined up at fullback. Keep in mind, there's another two phase to that, where the quarterback can keep it or pitch it. Kind of a flashback to option football which I know the guy up here in the booth <laughs> deep down would really want to be doing talking about uh, father of the coach on the field Lou Holtz up here with us about to join us shortly that caps a six place 66 yard drive for the Pirates oh. oh what a big hit guy got rocked Winston guy got nailed back at the 15 yard line yeah I'll tell you Leon best the safety 
from East Carolina. He will hit you now. He had a cause fumble on a big hit against Tulsa. That was him coming in there first. So good. First down and 10. Play fake by Hartline. Going up top. Has a man at the 25. It's caught. McCaskill again with another play for the Wildcats. Eugene McCaskill with another reception. And Mark, it started with play action on first and ten. Watch the play action right here by Hartline. Now, Gene McCaskill, a true freshman from South Carolina, first team All-State last year, runs by Travis Simmons, number 13, the corner. Eskridge, the safety, a little late getting over the top. But Mike Hartline, excellent throw right there. Gives Kentucky first down and goal. Dixon on the carry. Got back to the line of scrimmage. You know, Mike Hartline getting a second chance, Mark. You know, he started the first eight games of the year. Then he was benched after the Florida debacle, you know, the 63-5 loss. They go with Randall Cobb. Getting a second chance right now. And, you know, I think it kind of helps him personally that Randall Cobb is not dressed and not playing in this game because it's his game. And I think that pressure and probably the added confidence he has helps him. Got a long loose to work with in this game. This is Dixon. Dixon puts his hat down and plows forward for an extra three yards. Ran right into Van Eskridge, which sometimes can be hazardous to your health. <laughs> Dixon getting four yards. Those two safeties, they can really bring the wood. Leon Best and Van Eskridge. It'll be third down and goal coming up for Kentucky. How do you feel about the way Hartline has managed the game so far for the Wildcats? I like that pass he just made on first and ten. <laughs> I mean, they hadn't had much offense until this drive right here, but the combination of Tony Dixon running it and then some play action with Hartline going downfield, pretty good job. 11th play of the drive on the fade. Uh, broken up in the end zone nicely. Intended for Adams, but Emmanuel Davis, who was a freshman All-American this year for ECU, made a nice play. Hey, this kid is going to be a great football player. A good job, Mark, of knowing he was in position and then taking a look back at the quarterback and going up and playing the football. Gets that left hand in there. Emmanuel Davis, you said it, freshman All-American, four interceptions, eight passes broken up. And Lonis Sieber comes in to attempt this field goal from 21 yards out. He missed one earlier from 51. This one much closer. And Kentucky gets on the scoreboard now trailing 10 to 3 with just under nine minutes to go in the first half. Well, Skip Holtz, I think he learned his coaching lessons well, but did he really want to get into it that bad? Uh, nothing like Memphis barbecue, world famous. That's Corky's barbecue. Uh, Cooks pork shoulders for 22 hours in its ribs for over seven hours. That, that, that's the type of uh, fall off the bone type of ribs that uh, you get all sloppy with. Kentucky scoring on a field goal by Sieber moments ago before we went to break. It's 10 to 3 with 8.59 to go here in the first half of play. Kentucky kicking off. Wow. This one will start off on the 20 yard line now. Skip Holtz's crew leading 10 to 3. We're joined by Lou Holtz, his dad. And is, is it true when he came to you and said that I want to get into coaching? You said, you better go ask your mother, make sure she's not armed. Is that yeah, right? He came in and said, I want to be a coach. I'm at Notre Dame. I said, we didn't send you to Notre Dame to be a coach. We sent you to be president of a corporation. Could have sent you to Kent State to be his coach for a much cheaper. But I said, when you tell your mom, make sure she's unarmed because she'll shoot you. But he wanted to go in it for the right reasons. We're proud of him. All right, coach. And uh, so far, uh, doing very well. His team, uh, with the lead, 10 to 3. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Out of the shotgun. Pickney in a little bit of trouble. Has a man in behind the defense, and it's caught with plenty of real estate ahead of his intended receiver. This is going to be a score. Touchdown, Pirates. Freeney. Well, I'll tell you what, we put the dad on camera, and some good things happened right away. Patrick Pinckney keeping the play alive, as you see happen so many times in college football with the mobile quarterback. And then Daryl Freeney, 
the freshman wide receiver mark down the sideline. Boy, that was mostly run after the catch. But Pickney showing his elusiveness to make that play. A long strike by the Pirates. And it's blocked. The extra point blocked by Kentucky. This ball still alive. And it comes out to the 25 yard line. One more look at the 13th touchdown pass of the year by Pickney. Well, keep an eye on Pickney off the roll right there. The freshman receiver, he runs by Shamari Moore, the senior corner. Big play for East Carolina. Daryl Freeney, the Pirates, giving East Carolina 16-3 lead after that 80-yard touchdown catch. Most of it a run by Freeney after making the catch. The second and touchdown catch of his career. And you have to give tremendous credit right there to Patrick Pinckney, though, Mark. The protection broke down. Kentucky brought the linebacker, and the quarterback made the play. Jones and Guy back deep for the Wildcats, and once again, they fumbled the a kickoff. This is Guy. That's the second time that Guy has fumbled a kickoff return. Let's and take one more look at that touchdown. Yeah, What's the key? Keep in, mind, keep in mind, right here, Hello. Shamari Moore is in man-to-man -man coverage. Hello. But right here, he thinks Pinckney's going to run the football. Now, stop it. See his eyes looking back at the quarterback. He, but he's in man-to-man -man coverage, and the freshman receiver, Daryl Freeney, gets behind him. But anytime you have a quarterback that's a threat to run, that defensive back, even in man-to-man, -man, starts peeking in that backfield, and bad things happen. Well, Hartline is connected on eight of his last ten passes, first down and ten here. Pass juggled and ruled incomplete at the 30-yard line. Dixon couldn't squeeze it. 26 seconds to go in the half. Kentucky with all three timeouts remaining. Well, East Carolina completely in charge of this football game. Much more explosive offensively than I thought they would be. And I mean, Rich Brooks re realizes right now with this anemic offense, I think he's surprised that East Carolina would have 16 points in this first half. Now, the Kentucky wide receivers talked as a group about being able to step up and meet the challenge in this Liberty Bowl game. I was on Liberty Bowl game. Hartline sacked back at the 13 by Joseph. Boy, for a guy who lost 73 pounds, Bob, uh, there's still a lot of them left. Yeah, and a guy <laughs> that had back surgery last spring didn't practice until spring, until the start of fall camp. We're talking about Linval Joseph. And Skip Holse's team with the lead at the end of the first half, 16 to 3. And the reason he's doing that, you can't have both teams going to the locker room at the same time. They share the tunnel. Yeah, we saw what happened at the start of the game. Todd Harris reported on it. Let's go back downstairs to Todd. All right, Mark here with Coach Rich Brooks. Coach, a tremendous stand by your defensive backs there as they took three shots in the end zone. What is your message to the defense at half? Well, uh, tackle would be the first message. The second message is uh, we've got some young guys that have made some mistakes uh, handling kickoffs and punts. And... Uh, you know, I think we've taken uh, one of their best shots, and now we've got to come out and respond. What do you have to do with only three points on their board and down by 13 offensively? Score. Doesn't take a genius to figure that out. We've got to move the ball, and we're, we've got to eliminate our negative plays on offense. Thank you, Coach. Mark? All right, Todd. Uh, he's talking, of course, about Winston Guy as it pertains to the fumble issues. And East Carolina with the lead at the half. Let's join Reese Davis, Mark May, and Philip Fulmer for the Flomax Halftime Report. And welcome to the 50th anniversary of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl on ESPN. We come to you under the lights here in Memphis, Tennessee. Sarah Evans, the award-winning artist with a great, great song just a few moments ago. Uh, had Bob Davey and I tapping our feet a little bit here. You, you got a little bit of rhythm. rhythm. I'm going to tell you what, AutoZone Liberty Bowl, they, they've done an outstanding job now. I mean that. We were out on Beale Street uh -huh. a little bit last night. 
you may be a lot longer than me, but I was out there for a little bit. Great <laughs> flavor, great setting for a bowl game. I'm impressed with the Liberty Bowl. They've done an outstanding job. Bob, when you talk about the two teams on the field, we didn't expect a lot of offense coming in here, but at least half of the equation has come through offensively. East Carolina with some surprisingly prolific plays offensively. Yeah, in the first I mean, half. I agree. I mean, in, in the 80 yard touchdown pass, mm -hmm. which is the third longest in Liberty Bowl history against man to man coverage, when Pinckney started to scramble, the quarterback, the cornerback jumped up was the key play that Mark Kentucky gets this football right here to start the second half. And I'm going to tell you what now, I've been around Rich Brooks enough to know he got after this Kentucky football team at halftime. I just and this is key right here, key, this first half drive. Well, first of all, they got to catch the kickoff, which they do this time for a change. This is Jones, and Jones with a nice alley. Jones busting out. One man to beat, and the turbo is kicked in. Wildcats going buck wild. Touchdown. How about... I think Rich Brooks did a pretty good Deeply job got into them. with that halftime talk. David Jones, a 99-yard kickoff return for the score. Wow. David Jones was a wide receiver last year. That is great blocking. Untouched. Has a little hitch in his giddy up right there. <laughs> but, Mark, that is great blocking. He went untouched. But this guy was a wide receiver a year ago. Joker Phillips went to him in the spring and said, listen, you want to make some money next year? He said, yeah. He said, well, you better move the defensive back. And how about two extra wow, blocks? Wow, blocked again. Kentucky having some issues in the kicking game. So it's going to stay 16 to 9. But that was a bowl record kickoff return of 99 <laughs> yards. So Rich Brooks goes from being happy about things to being upset again. <laughs> the extra point blocked by Lonis uh, Sieber. His extra point no good. Well, back to that David Jones story, though. You know, you're a wide receiver. Joker Phillips, the offensive coordinator, comes in and said, man, you want to make some money in the NFL? You need to go to defensive back. He's a defensive back, but boy, he looked like an offensive yeah. player. He got burned a lot early in his career at the position, and Bob, uh, a smoother ride, though, in all this season as compared to last year in 2007 before the Eastern Kentucky game. He had to undergo an emergency appendectomy and was actually back a lot sooner than thought. Than thought. So David Jones, uh, good at responding to adversity, and boy, we've had all of, what, 12 seconds eclipse here in the third quarter. And Kentucky has already stolen the momentum away from East Carolina. Well, we can still talk about the job East Carolina's defense did in that first half, but that was a special team's major mistake right there as we take a look at Skip Holt. And you know what? It's six points, and that's big because it's 16-9, but even bigger, just the mindset and the emotion of this football team and Kentucky incidentally with the wind here in the third quarter. Right, let's do this thing again. Just flip it around. Nasty kicking off to Bowman and Rogers. This is going to be Bowman and now East Carolina having issues handling the kickoff. Well, Bob, I, I really think I'd have to give the edge to the Wildcat fans last night. They seem to slightly outnumber the Pirate fans down on Beale Street. Yeah. First down for the Pirates. Doing it running back by committee. Brandon Simmons that time because Chris Johnson is standing by with Todd Harris. All right, thanks, Mark. What do you get when you get over 1,200 yards rushing, nine rushing TVs? Well, he's the runner-up of the NFL Rookie of the Year. Chris, congratulations, first of all. Let's talk about your Pirates tonight. Your thoughts on their performance this year? Um, they're doing a great job right now. Um, I hear they just find their playmakers and make plays. We've got a whole bunch of people hurt right now. So for us to be winning 16-9 right now, we're trying to hold on and get this victory. When you heard about Coach Holt being interviewed or thought about being interviewed by a lot of other programs that he possibly was leaving, what were your thoughts about him leaving East Carolina? Oh, my thoughts was uh, Coach Holt, he's a great coach, and he done did a lot for ECU. So 
for them to give him the opportunity to interview other places and go to a, like a real big job to a real big school i was real happy for him and eventually when whatever school he do go to i'd be very happy for him so many people say when you make the transition to the nfl from college it's the speed of the game you didn't seem to have a problem with that this year what was the key uh, the key is this when you run a 4 2 4 then you fast like everybody else out there but the speed of the game is much different as a whole. The speed of the game is real fast. So you just got to stick to your keys and run hard or whatever you do, do it fast. He's referring, of course, to his 4 2 40. He ran during the combine, a laser timed event, was one of the fastest ever. Now you team up with Lindale White in the backfield. His USC Trojans won last night. Your Pirates have got to pull through tonight because you know he's going to be giving you the business when you see him again. Yeah, I got to give a shout out to Lindale. You know what I'm saying? I know he's watching. But, um, yeah, I was tempted to um, go against him with USC, but once I did my research and seen Penn State, I knew they was going to have a victory, so I can't go back to Nashville with a loss under my belt. You guys have a bye this week. Good luck to you in the Tennessee Titans. We wish you the best. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Jonesy. All right, Todd. East Carolina going three and out, now forced to punt. Dodge, this one not as good as his earlier one, bounces at the 40 with a chance to return it. McCaskill. Is going to give Kentucky great field position here at the 26 yard line. So Kentucky looking good here after the three and out. Well, just a great defensive effort by Kentucky. Mark, it just shows you again what field position does. You know, East Carolina with the illegal block after the punt returner gave the fair catch signal was backed up on their own goal line. And boy, look at this field position, starting on the 26-yard line after that three and out by Kentucky's defense. Time for Mike Hartline to take a stance here, plant his feet in the sand, and make a statement about who he is as quarterback. Completes this pass at the 23. Pyrus Langster making the catch at the 23-yard line. Well, back to Mike Hartline. Mike Hartline is going to face a little bit of competition next year at the quarterbacking spot for Kentucky and this game presents an awful great opportunity for him to present well for himself. He hands it off this time to Tony Dixon. Remember it was Hartline that got the team off to a good start 4 and 0 before struggling a little bit benched after they went 5 and 3 Randall Cobb right there on the sidelines became the starting quarterback for the last three games. He suffered a knee injury and now Hartline is reborn. Well Hartline is going to at competition as well. Kentucky with a commitment from Mr. Football in Indiana, a big quarterback at about 6'5, 230 from Carmel, Indiana, has committed to Kentucky as well. So, but what a great audition right here for Hartline. They blitz him and he completes the pass and then some. Touchdown, Kentucky. Langster. And the Wildcats are a point away from tying the game. Kyrus Langster with the catch. Excellent throw by Hartline. I mean, Mark, he stood tall in that pocket. Chris Maddox, the linebacker, in his face. Man-to-man -man coverage. The outside route, the defensive back, Leon Best, should be inside out on the tackle rather than outside in. And a big touchdown by Kyrus Langston. That's his first touchdown catch of the season and of his career. And look at this. We're tied at 16 apiece. Langster, the former high school teammate of Randall Cobb with a catch. Five decades of the Liberty Bowl. Presented by AutoZone. 1982 marks the fourth Liberty Bowl appearance for Alabama and the final game for Bear Bryant after 38 seasons as a head coach. Paul Bear Bryant goes out a winner in his final game. 21 to 15 Alabama. Boy, what a man. The victory over Illinois gave Bryant his 323rd career win, a Division I record that would stand for 19 years. Wow. You know, Bob, I was thinking about rocking a houndstooth hat for this game tonight, but it's, it's not quite the same as when Bear wore one. Tell you what, man, that's a great shot, though, of Bear, Bear Bryant being carried off yeah. that field in his last game. I mean, there is a lot of history here at this Liberty Bowl. 
Well, what a comeback by Kentucky, though, here in the second half. Still not even midway through the third quarter, and the Wildcats strike quickly with a couple of touchdowns. This is Michael Bowman on the kickoff return for the Conference USA champs from East Carolina. Right now reeling a little bit. Bowman out to the 28-yard line, and Pirates get it back. Pickney completes it over the middle. That's going to be a first down to Devon Drew. And Drew still on his feet out to the 38-yard line. This is Whitley. Whitley still on his feet. He's the faster and shiftier of the two backs. Down to the 44-yard line where Harrison makes the stop. But it's a pirate first down on the pickup of 18. Yeah, Whitley with 14 carries, 104 yards against Tulsa. I mean, he just takes the football outside. Nobody built a wall or built a fence for Kentucky keeping the football inside. They just let him run outside that time. First down and 10. You look at the total yardage for the respective teams. East Carolina with the big edge early, but Kentucky narrowing that margin now. Well, we've had enough momentum swings in this second <laughs> half to last a lifetime now. Out of the shotgun, Pickney hands it off to his tailback. That's Whitley again picking up five. Mark, you think about it. We had the opening kickoff of the second half for a touchdown. Well, yeah, for a touchdown. Then the touchdown pass by Kentucky. Momentum their way. Then the roughing the punter. Then the interception by Kentucky. And now East Carolina on the move. I mean, it has been a seesaw right here. You see the Rich Brooks on the sidelines. People keep wanting to push him into the rocking chair to retirement. But, man, <laughs> he has a lot of fire in the furnace still, Bob. A bunch of his players have felt his frustration. And a nice stop in the backfield on Rodgers by number four, Micah Johnson, one of their leaders at linebacker. When healthy, he has been one of the more outstanding players defensively for Kentucky as he causes a loss of five on the play. Yeah, Micah Johnson right here, I believe. Yeah. Paul Horning Award, Mr. Football in Kentucky. Young guy out of uh, Louisville, highly recruited, 6'2", 250. One of those juniors, Mark, that is going to test the NFL waters. And he comes off the field. He's a little shaken up. Michael Johnson was first team all SEC. Pinckney delivers a bullet complete at the 32 yard line to Devon Drew. Well, that is an unbelievable job as we look at Michael Johnson. But Buffalo, several years ago, Mark, not many people in this country realized Buffalo Bulls yeah. played football now. Let's be honest. Pinckney up top and out of bounds. Yeah, back to that point. Turner Gill has done one of the more outstanding coaching jobs in the country this year. And uh, we saw his team featured a little bit earlier on the Dodge game changing moment. Uh, they really rallied. They had so many, <laughs> how many, three or four comeback overtime games. overtime victories. I mean, they year. were number one in overtime games, I believe, with four. Yeah. East Carolina was number two with three overtime games. Yeah. But I mean, come on now, we're talking about Buffalo Bull football right now, right in January, Mark. That's an accomplishment. That pass incomplete. At the 30 yard line, Michael Bowman, the intended receiver. Uh, you get a geography report, I'm going to give you a weather report. <laughs> bring a coat, baby. Well, no, it's indoors. Uh, bring some weather as well. You've got to get indoors first, <laughs> unless you're going to sleep in that arena. Third down and 10, Pickney under duress and run out of bounds, about four yards short of the first down. And tumbles into a few fans there on the sidelines. He gains seven. As the clock continues to wind down on the third quarter, just 28 seconds to play. Patrick Pinckney, his father played DB at East Carolina. Well, and with the Detroit Lions in the NFL, his father Reggie always liked to remind Patrick, his son, about being on the last East Carolina team to win a conference title some 32 years ago, but he can't do that anymore. Well, this is a field goal here. Ben Hartman is a guy. He has four field goals in the last two games. He's only 19 for 29 on the season. Better hurry up here. This one from 43 yards out. And he knocks it through good with plenty of leg to spare. Okay. So East Carolina takes the lead. 19 to 16. 
with six seconds to go in the third quarter. Harden, Kentucky with the win tonight in this game against East Carolina would win its third consecutive bowl game for the first time in school history and make a lot of believers out of those in the Wildcat Nation and uh, something might happen here on this kickoff return as they get it all the way out into good field position at the 45 yard line that was John Connor the starting fullback and Kentucky going to start with good field position when we start the fourth quarter. Back under the lights here in Memphis, Tennessee for the 50th edition of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Start of the fourth quarter, and I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Todd Harris. An entertaining game, especially in the third quarter. Lots of swings in momentum. Kentucky first down on the pitch. This is Alfonso Smith. And he got a nice little block in a big alley. Smith down to the 15-yard line for the Wildcats. A huge burst over the left side for 39 yards. And Mark Dakota Marshall, the corner from East Carolina. Watch him up here at the top. Stop it right there. Right now, there's nobody outside of you. See these purple shirts inside? If you keep the football inside, they get a chance to play. Because Dakota Marshall came inside, it allowed Tony Dixon to get to the sideline. And that's what you talk about, team defense. Everybody just taking care of their responsibility. Instead, it's first down and 10. Hart line on the play fake. Wisely <laughs> throws it out of bounds. Wow. Maybe by not enough. <laughs> it was in the vicinity of E.J. Adams, his receiver. Well, you know, C.J. Wilson, 95. Really the first time we've had a chance to talk about him tonight. He was in the backfield right there. This guy is really a good player. I mean, that looks like a Southeastern Conference defensive end, doesn't it, Mark? Yeah. 6'4", 271, Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Came in as a Prop 48 with academic issues graduated in less than four years great su great success story heartline flyers incomplete nobody even close actually CJ Wilson with good pressure up front the guy you were just talking about an interesting uh, he's the lumber half of the lumber and lightning well, up I front. want you to watch right here and then keep your eye on Gary will Gary Williams the offensive tackle because I've got a quote by Gary Williams. Gary Williams said he's just another guy, C.J. Wilson. And mm. I play in the SEC. I'm not all that impressed. He's just another guy. <laughs> I think he's pretty good just as another guy now, don't uh, you? Yeah. Pro prospect of sorts, albeit just a junior, has NFL type talent. Heartline incomplete. And for more, let's go down to Todd. Well, Mark, you and Coach talking about talented players. Trevard Lindley, you know the name, the cornerback for the Wildcats. He is done for the night in what has been described as a left hyperextended elbow. Now, he will be covered, filled in, though, I should say, by Robbie McAtee, Calvin Harrison, and Shamari Moore. He's that valuable. And there's the play where it happened. You see that elbow get bent back and hyperextended. This field goal attempt from Lona Sieber going to come from 34 yards out for the time. And Sieber knocks it through. We're tied at 19 apiece with 14.07 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone, to Memphis for the 50th edition of the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Deadlocked at 19. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Out of the SEC, Kentucky, uh, the Conference USA champs from East Carolina. Mark, this kicker, Tim Maste, he's the punter and the kicker. He's played in 49 games, a four-year starter. That's a school record. Number one punter in the SEC. He has a great leg on these kickoffs, and you know he's a lot like you. I mean, he is a fitness <laughs> freak now. He told me a story. What he told you, you heard that story. He went a whole semester where he went to bed every night at 9 a.m., got up at 6 a.m., no sugar, no starches. Yep, no flour, nothing. Yeah. No car, low carb, no carb diet. He killed. I need verification. Look at that. Back deep, it's Bowman and Rogers. 
At the two-yard line, this is going to be Bowman. Oh, and he got drilled. Didn't even make it out to the 20-yard line. Special team speaking loudly in this game. It's Bob. been the whole second half. I mean, you talk about momentum change. David Jones, Kentucky with only three points in the first half, takes the second half kickoff back. Then the punt return where they start on the 26-yard line, their next touchdown. Then the kickoff return where they start at midfield. The kicking game in the second half, the return game for Kentucky. The difference in the game. Hey, good news for ECU as Pinckney back in the ball game. Bad news is they only gained about a yard on the play. Brandon Simmons stopped by Myron Pryor. So you heard Todd Harris report a few moments ago that Patrick Pinckney, who was shaken up on the last series, looked at his father. Reggie in the stand said, Dad, I'm all right. I'm going back in the ball game. And here he is, second down and nine coming up. Under five minutes to go. The Pirates looking for their 10th win of the season, their first 10 win season since 1991, potentially. Pickney under a little bit of heat and sacked back at the 17 yard line. And it's loose, still loose. Kentucky has it. Touchdown, Wildcats, Micah Johnson. Wow. Jeremy Jarman with the sack, Johnson with the score off the fumble. Well, Jeremy Jarman, 99, Mark. Watch him come in right there from the backside, strip the football out, and then the ball is picked up Micah by jo Micah Johnson for the touchdown. And let me tell you something. Jeremy Jarman wrote the check. <laughs> he wrote the check by getting up at the basketball game, guaranteeing victory. He just cashed that check right now, Mark. He had the money in the bank <laughs> when he wrote the check. He certainly did. A native of Memphis, Tennessee, a homecoming for Jeremy Jarman. He said, hey, I was excited when I found out we were coming to the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. They're going to review this play and make sure that Pinckney wasn't down first. Yeah, that's hard to see right there. I mean, that's very close. Boy, Johnson scooped it up quickly out of that little scrum. Yeah, his... Boy, what do you think? The I mean, previous angle showed yeah, that, that, that was, it was loose. That was a great angle right here. I think this one will tell us. Ooh, <laughs> I, I'll say this. It was called a fumble on the field. I think that's too close to change. I'll say that. I think right. the call will stand. Let me say this. It has to be indisputable evidence that that knee was down to change that call. I think you have to go with what was called on the field. And a fumble. Right there it looks like Mark, it is so down. close. That's so close. Well, here Following comes the call. It's been determined that the runner was down. Wow. At the 16-yard yeah. line. Third down. Clock operator. Set the game clock. Four, four, three. Four, four, three on the game clock. Can't argue the call at all, no. Mark. Either no. way. No. And you know what? Mike uh, Pickney knew something that we didn't know. Well, <laughs> of the, course, he's going to take that position. I think the great thing, it's a 19-19 game. Let him play it out right here. Can't argue with the yeah. call. Now, I wouldn't have wanted to make that call <laughs> if I was that Big Ten review official in the box. But let's go play now. And it's still third down and 14. And it's going to be man-to-man -man coverage. I'm a little surprised, Mark, that they don't bunch these receivers and run some kind of crossing routes against this man-to-man -man coverage. They keep running them vertical, which is easy to defend. Had run the, some crossing routes. Had the same look for most of the night. No question, Mark. Bring these receivers across the field. They'd be setting them up potentially for something different here. Pickney delivers, has a man in behind the secondary. It's caught. Midfield and a huge conversion. Hey, when it's money time, it's Devon Drew time. Yeah, and it's Devon Drew on the freshman Winston guy. A 39-yard right gain. Here is the freshman Winston guy. Here is the best receiver on their football team. A little corner route, and that's a senior mark.
with a world of experience against a freshman that injuries to Travard Lindley and David Jones, the corners from Kentucky. A good point. This is Whitley, and Whitley tries the right side of that offensive line. Picks up a few on the play. Clock winding down with 344 to go. East Carolina with three timeouts. Kentucky with two timeouts remaining. Talk about momentum swings. <laughs> the touchdown from Kentucky overruled. Can't argue the call. And all of a sudden, East Carolina in potential game-winning field goal range. And their kicker has four game-winning field goals in his career for East Carolina. A what moment, momentum swings. A moment ago, saw Lindley. Arguably the best DB for Kentucky on the sidelines with an injury. And that might have been another fumble. It's loose. Kentucky, another recovery. Jenkins. Touchdown. A replay. Rerun. Instant classic, Mark Jones. Can it happen twice? Wow. And Tulsa. Unbelievable. Tulsa, East Carolina, the team that caused all the turnovers. Let's look. This is going to be close again. Are they going to review this one? No, no that, that ball is clearly yeah. out. And Athletic ability by Ventrell Jenkins was his knee down. I hate to bring it up, Bob. But <laughs> An incredible swing. Let me show you something. Now watch his hand. Has the ball. Now is his knee down? His knee is down. Is that possession, Bob? A yes. hand on the ball? Yeah. They are kicking the extra point. And, and it's the third extra point block of the day. Everything unimaginable is happening here in the fourth quarter. The extra point blocked. And it's going to be 25-19. The margin is six. The block by Emmanuel Davis. But why wasn't that called back? They're going to call it a touchdown. Well, and this is the first Kentucky lead of the day. 25 to 19 with 302 to go. The first time there was a fumble, it was ruled down. The second time returned for a touchdown. The touchdown stands by Ventrell Jenkins. Mark. I've seen a lot of football games. Two calls like that on two caused fumbles. Defensive linemen picking both up and running them in. On the same drive. The knee bowl. This is all about where is the knee this game. Yeah. Look at the big plays. Momentum swings of this football game. One more time looking at it. The fumble and well, then there's the, the question. Yeah. I'm not sure if he had possession or not. But it is very, very close. I guess you lose one if you're Kentucky and you win yeah. one if you're Kentucky. Yeah. It comes out 50 50. But Mark, there's still three minutes and two seconds left. And East Carolina with three timeouts in this game. Plenty of time to go. Margin at six. And Rodgers on the kickoff return. Dangerously close to his knee touching down. Well, let's enjoy. We, we saw that earlier on another kickoff Let's return. enjoy this stiff arm right here by the big man. Wow. Did he grab? No. He did not grab the face mask. Pinkney's mouthpiece came out. Mark, that is an unbelievable stiff arm right there. Hey. The mouthpiece flying, the helmet flying. Oh, that's a that's oh, a Larry Holmes oh, oh. jab with a left. Man. And you are allowed to put your hand in the face. And here's the and let's yeah. This is three knees. Okay, here's the first one. Just a minute ago, his knee is touching. Bob, am I seeing things tonight? That knee is down. Just under three minutes to go. Those guys up in the booth playing an incredibly significant role in tonight's game. And the replay official in the booth, Andy Panucci. 
receiver, when he caught the football, had a knee on the ground. The ball will be placed the one-yard line, first down. Andy Panucci, the replay official from the Big Ten, he didn't realize when he signed up for this gig, Mark, <laughs> it was going to be this stressful now. <laughs> Here's, Here's the one in the third yeah. quarter. Here's the first one. Now a different player, but almost identical position on the field. Bang, bang. I think his knee was down there. And here's the one that just happened, which is officially reviewed, no question. Well, at least Carolina <laughs> not making it easy for themselves, Bob, with two fumbles on the last drive, one which went back for a touchdown for Kentucky, and now starting 99 yards away from the end zone. Only a touchdown will get it to a manageable margin. Pinkney out of the end zone, finds his man complete. Close to a first down at the 12-yard line. That's his tight end, Devon Drew. Drew with the first down for East Carolina. They have a couple of timeouts remaining, an 11-yard pickup, three timeouts remaining. First down and 10. They got to get to work in a hurry here. Pickney pulls the trigger again this time. I'll tell you, Randall. Incomplete. Randall Burden, the freshman red shirt corner, is a physical guy now. I mean, he doesn't look like it. I mean, <laughs> he's this thin, thin guy, wiry. He gets up there now. He's not bashful about bump and run and using his hands. Devon Drew, number three. Second and ten coming up. Is the guy, Mark. Pickney, incomplete at the 20 yard line. Broken up by Burden, the pass intended for Alex Taylor. And I'll tell you, Burden, the freshman DB, is making an impression on me in this football game. Freshman red shirt out of LaGrange, Georgia. He is not bashful. Man under with two deep safeties behind him right here. A pivotal third down and 10 coming up for East Carolina. Right here, Devon Drew, number three. Pickney given time into traffic and incomplete at the 35. Fourth down coming up for East Carolina. Joe Womack was the intended target, but David Jones on him like glue. Yeah. Three timeouts, Mark. Fourth and ten. You have to punt this football. Keep in mind again, number 61, William Smith, not to be repetitive. He is the backup snapper, a freshman. Special teams a big part of this game tonight and it all turned around at the start of the third quarter on that kickoff return by Jones for a touchdown a low line drive punt bouncing harmlessly at the 45 yard line and Kentucky's going to have good field position here with 234 to go after the 43 yard punt so Skip Holtz's defense now with the task of trying to get a stop here and a huge stop it would be for East Carolina first and 10 Kentucky. East Carolina with its full complement of three timeouts remaining. And boy, what do you say about the performance of Mike Hartline tonight? Got his team off to that 4-0 start, subsequently 5-3 start, then was benched, lost the starting job for three games to Randall Cobb. Didn't take it well, but kept at it. And leading his team right now in the bowl game with the lead. Tony Dixon on the carry. Got about six on the play. Eskridge making the stop for East Carolina. And a timeout called by East Carolina. Two timeouts remaining for each team, second and four for Kentucky. Ball at the 49 yard line of the Pirates. Dixon the lone back, and they hand it off to Tony Dixon between the tackles. Got about two down to the 46 yard line. Joseph making the stop. And Mark, really the rule on this, control of the ball is possession. So the question is, right there, if he has control of that ball, that's ruled possession, was the knee down when he had possession? Right there, 
he has control of that football in my opinion and it looks to me like that knee is down so that's the rule control is ruled possession it doesn't matter now because it's over 224 to go East Carolina burning another one of its timeouts just one remaining now now if you're East Carolina Bob and defensively coming up third down and two to go one timeout remaining your best case scenario on this next play is what for who for East Carolina stop them right here and use your timeout. I mean it's third down and two they're going to run the football your defense is all about that front seven and these linebackers are going to come up over the top right here watch these linebackers try to come up here and jump Mark. Hartline gives it to his tailback and it's a first down Dixon looks like he got the first down and that is a huge conversion for the Wildcats. Tony Dixon with some tough sledding between the tackles and it's a first down for Kentucky just inside the 45 yard line and I'll tell you this guy right here to me exemplifies the heart of this Kentucky team at six and six coming limping into this bowl game not flashy not spectacular but just kept on plugging tonight 25 rushes for 76 yards and a good night's work for Tony Dixon under two minutes to go there's Dixon again falls forward to the 44 yard line with 150 to go this has been a great bowl game Mark Jones <laughs> it sure has. it's been a and at what point does Skip Holtz burn his last time out well, here with it seven and nine? It doesn't really matter because he has one time out left. So and to take his chances and wait on this one. Well, he can stop the clock one more time, period. So whether he stops it right now or he tries to stop it after this play is not going to really matter. Second down and nine. It off to Dixon again. Dixon dependable down to the 39 yard line. It'll be third down and about three or four coming up for Kentucky. One more win here for Kentucky would be their third consecutive bowl victory for the first time in school history. And Holt's not going to use his timeout. He's going to let the clock wind down and. And you know the only here. controversy with this Mark if you use the timeout right now and Kentucky fumbled the football you then would have more time on offense to take the ball and score okay. by waiting to run it down probably not great strategy third and four Dixon has the first down well, you use your timeout now. I'm not sure whether it matters or not. Right. But he rolled the dice. I go back to this, Mark. You know, the BCS system takes a lot of hits, right? Maybe too many bowl games, yet 68 teams going, only 51 staying home. Nine, six, and six teams in bowl games. That looks like pretty good bowl game atmosphere right there to me. This is pretty good stuff now. Yeah, Rich Brooks getting Kentucky's third consecutive bowl win for the first time in school history. And Tony Dixon is the man of the night offensively. The kneecap bowl. Mark Jones have you ever <laughs> seen four kneecap plays reviewed ever. Well our Capital One player of the game is Tony Dixon with 89 yards rushing 17 yards receiving and when they needed valuable and pivotal yards they went to him and Mike Hartline a guy who is the picture of a great comeback story man. Engineering that offense down the field when they had to Ventrell Jenkins right there number 95 the guy who recovered the loose ball on the fumble for the touchdown. Let's go downstairs to Todd Todd Harris. Well coach it wasn't pretty in the first half and you told me you had to get some points on the board. You did just that. What did you tell the kids at halftime. I don't think it's worth repeating on uh, public airways right now. I was not a very happy guy. 
I believe they got the message and our defense played like our defense played early in the year. I've never seen two back to back scores after one was called back on defense. That was a great effort by our defense. And Mike Hartline battling the flu. I don't know if you notice him going in and out of the locker room, but he had a lot of courage tonight, and I'm really proud of our football team. What does it mean for you and the Wildcats now to go into the offseason at 7 and 6? Well, it just means so much that now we're three times in the postseason, won all three. We now have 14 straight non conference victories, three straight bowl wins. Uh, I'm not happy with being seven and six. I'd rather be a lot higher than that, but but this is as good as it gets for us to come back and battle like that. Coach, congratulations. Liberty Bowl champs, happy new year. Thank you. SEC, baby. Is there not a huge difference between <laughs> seven and six and six and seven? And how about the old school defense and special teams <laughs> winning the AutoZone Liberty Bowl for the Kentucky Wildcats? A couple of pivotal replays and Sometimes it's it's all in the knees and it was tonight for Kentucky. They win it 25 to 19. Bob, I want to wish you and Joanne and your kids a happy new year. Buddy. Hey Mark, you're the it's best, been a great man. season. I'm on mission these next few months now. Been a great season.